First, let's tackle this problem. What I like to do is skip to what the question is asking. It's asking us to calculate the value of Kc for the reaction. Kc is equal to concentration of product divided by concentration of reactants and coefficients become exponents. So for this reaction, Kc is equal to PCl5 divided by PCl3 and Cl2. They have no coefficients, so they have no exponents. And now we just plug in the numbers we have available. So it tells us that a 5 liter container contains this amount of PCl3, this amount of PCl5, and this amount of PCl2 at 150 degrees Celsius in an equilibrium mixture. So remember that concentration is equal to moles divided by liter. It gives us liters and moles, so we'd have to calculate concentration ourselves. Everything is in a 5.00 liter container, which means everything has a volume of 5 liters. PCL3 has 0.0555 moles. You can write that. Moles divided by liter gives us concentration. PCL3 has a concentration of 0.0111 moles per liter. CL2 has 0.0844 moles. You can write that. Moles divided by liter gives us concentration. So we get 0.01688 moles per liter. PCL5 has 0.0200 moles. If we write that and do moles divided by liters to get concentration. PCL5 has a concentration of 0.04 moles per liter. Now that we have the numbers, we can plug it into our formula. So this is equal to 0.004 divided by 0.0111 multiplied by 0.01688. Using your magnificent calculator, you can calculate this out. You should get a Kc value of 21.3 rounded. And this will be the answer to this question. Let's tackle this next practice problem. Let's skip to what it's asking us to do. It's asking us to determine which way the reaction will shift to reach equilibrium if we have these concentrations. So this is a reaction quotient question because it's telling us that these concentrations are not equilibrium. A reaction quotient is basically the same as Kc, but Kc is specifically products and reactants at equilibrium. Don't worry if you don't know what a reaction quotient is because it's written the same as Kc and what we're going to do is we're going to get the Kc value, the Q value, and we're just going to compare it to the value they give us. So Kc is equal to products divided by reactants. So we have CO to the power of 2 as a coefficient of 2 multiplied by O2 divided by CO2 to the power of 2 as it has a coefficient of 2. And now we just plug in the numbers we have. So for CO, we have 0 0.400. For O2, we have 0 0.186. And then for CO2, we have 0 0.0370. And using our calculator, we can calculate the cell and we should get 21.7. We just compare this to this number. I like to compare on a number line, and on a number line, the right numbers are bigger, and the left side numbers are smaller. So 21.7 would go on the left side, and 25.9 would go on the right side. So the number line, to get from 21.7 to 25.9, go right. So this would be a shift right to reach equilibrium. So for the second part of this question, it's the same as what we did for the first one, but now we have different concentrations. So we just plug these available numbers into our formula. So CO has concentration of 0 0.265. O2, 0 0.160, and CO2, 0 0.0100. Use our calculator and calculating this out, we should get 112.4. Then we compare this Kc value or Q value to the Kc value they give us here. I like to compare on a number line. So on a number line, the bigger number is on the right side. So 112.4 would be here, and 25.9 would be on the left side. To go from 112.4 to 25.9 equilibrium, you have to go left on the number line. So there's a shift left to reach equilibrium. Let's try this question now. So let's skip to what the question is asking for. It's asking us to determine the concentration of water in the equilibrium mixture. So we need to find H2O. And we're going to need to write the equilibrium expression for Kc. So Kc is equal to products divided by reactants. So we have C2H5COO C2H5 multiplied by H2O divided by C2H5OH and C2H5COOH. No coefficients, so no exponents. And now we just plug in the numbers we have available. For Kc, we have 2.2. C2H5CO, C2H5 is equal to 1.0 M. M is just another way to write moles divided by liters. So we have 1.0. C2H5OH is equal to 0 0.50. And then C2H5COH is equal to 0 0.10. We have no more numbers available to plug in, so we do need to find H2O. To solve for H2O, we need to isolate H2O. So we can move all numbers diagonally. 0 0.50, 0 0.10, we can move diagonally, and 1.0, we can move diagonally down. So what happens is that 2.2 is then being multiplied by 0 0.50 and 0 0.10, then it's being divided by 1, which won't really do anything. And this is just equal to H2O. And using your calculator, you can calculate this out. You should get H2O 
is equal to 0 0.11 rounded. Now, if you don't understand how this diagonal works, it's basically because we're multiplying by 0 0.50 and 0 0.10. So we can cancel these out. And what happens is what we do to one side, we have to do the other. So this side will get multiplied. And when we divide this side by 1, we have to divide this side by 1 as well. Look at this reaction. It asks us to find the value of the equilibrium constant for the reverse reaction. The forward reaction is reactants to product, and the reverse reaction is products to reactants. So we have C and D to A and B. To write the equilibrium constant expression, remember that products divide by reactants and coefficients become exponents. For the reverse reaction, KC would be equal to AB divided by CD. And for the forward reaction, KC would be equal to CD divided by AB. Forward reaction equilibrium constant is equal to 15. What do you think the reverse reaction would be equal to? So the reverse reaction expression is the opposite to the forward one, or it's flipped over. So we just flip over this number or take the reciprocal. So for the forward expression, it's 15. We can see it as 15 divided by 1. When we flip it over or take the reciprocal, we get 1 divided by 15. And 1 divided by 15 will be the equilibrium constant Kc. And that is equal to 0 0.6 repeating. If we multiply this reaction by 2, the new reaction will all have coefficients of 2. Since they have no coefficient, it is assumed they have 1. 1 times 2 gets us 2. So A, B, C, and D will all have 2. But well, what would the KC value be for this reaction? Well, when we multiply this reaction by 2, the new KC value is just the old KC value to the power of what's being multiplied. Since we're multiplying by 2, KC will be to the power of 2. That means 15 to the power of 2. This will get us 225. If we multiply this reaction by 3, all the coefficients would be 3 for the new reaction. Kc is just the old Kc value to the power of what's being multiplied. So Kc to the power of 3, 15 to the power of 3, and that gets us 3,375. So if a reaction is being multiplied and it's asking you for the new Kc value, the Kc value will be equal to the old Kc value to the power of what is being multiplied. Another way we can find out what the Kc value would be if a reaction is multiplied is to use sample calculations. So if you make D15C3, B3, and A1, we write that in the equilibrium expression. We'd have 3 multiplied by 15 divided by 1 and 3. If we do this in a calculator, we'll get a Kc value of 15. And now if we multiply the reaction by 2, we get this. So the new equilibrium expression would just be everything squared. If we calculate this in our calculator, we get a value of 225. We can see that 225 is 15 squared. If we divide this reaction by 2, it's the same as saying we multiplied this reaction by 1 half. So if we multiply the coefficients by 1 half, the new coefficients will be 1 half. But what would the Kc value be for the new reaction? Remember that the old Kc value to the power of what the reaction is being multiplied by gets us the Kc value. Since we're multiplying by 1 half, Kc is to the power of 1 half means 15 to the power of 1 half, and this gets us 3.87. So that will be the answer. If we divide the reaction by 3, it's the same as saying we multiplied the reaction by 1 third. So the new reaction would all have coefficients of 1 third. But what would the Kc value be? Kc value is the old Kc value to the power of what the reaction is being multiplied by. So Kc to the power of 1 divided by 3. That means 15 to the power of 1 divided by 3. And this gets us 2.47. Let's try this final practice problem. In yellow are tips to help guide us. You can pause this video and try this yourself or work along with me. So let's find what the question is asking us for. It's asking us to determine the HF concentration at equilibrium. So first we write the equilibrium expression. Kc is equal to products divided by reactants. So we have HF to the power of 2 since it has a coefficient of 2. Then it would be divided by the reactants. So H2 and F2. Now we plug in the numbers we have. So Kc is equal to 2.5 times 10 to the power of 3. HF is what we're looking for, so we keep that the same. H2F2 is equal to 0.0025 moles per liter, so we can plug that in. And now we solve for the unknown. So to solve for the unknown, we have to isolate HF squared. So we can move this diagonally, and we move it diagonally, it will multiply these all together. 2.5 times 10 to the power of 3, multiplied by 0 0.0025, multiplied by 0 0.0025, this will be equal to HF squared. However, there's a problem. It says determine the concentration of HF at equilibrium, not HF squared. So we need to square root this and then square root this side as well. This will get us HF by itself. So once you use your calculator and calculate this out, 
HF should be equal to 0.13 moles per liter rounded to nearest sig digs.